So over the course of his 13 seasons in the NHL, Sean Avery was one of the league's leading agitators, both on and off the ice. So much so, he was once called the most hated man in hockey. But love him or hate him, Sean Avery made his mark, and he's now letting readers into his mindset with a brand new book. Offside is his journey from the minor leagues through the NHL. And out the other side, Sean Avery joins us in studio this morning. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, what a fascinating read. You're so candid in this book. Yeah, I mean, I think we... we uh... I use the template of a ball called Ball Four, a book called Ball Four, which mm -hmm. Jim Bouton wrote in 1970, and he doesn't hold anything back. So I think that was my guideline as far as, you know, I wasn't going to tell stories that uh, were going to get edited, or it was just, I was laying it all out there. Yeah, and I, feel, I was wondering as I was reading through this, I was thinking, okay, how did you decide what was in and what was out? I think uh, our original word count was in the thousands, mm -hmm. and obviously we had to pare it down. Um, I, I made sure that the only thing that I told were stories that I was personally involved in, that I was there for, or that somehow had an effect on me. Mm -hmm. I didn't really kind of talk about things that had nothing to do with me, or I wasn't there. You mentioned several times in the book the person on the ice, the Sean Avery on the ice was different than the one off the ice. You felt like you had to put a persona on when you were fighting in the NHL, meaning you're yeah. fighting for your, you know, yeah. your career in the NHL. Um, why did you feel the need to do that, to have those two separate I mean, areas? sports is, is, the, is an entertainment business. I think if anyone says it's not, they're, they're, they're crazy. Um, it's also an excuse for us to be able to act like animals. <laughs> you, you can't walk around the street and act like you do in a hockey rink. So it's an amazing release. It's the ability to kind of play a character that you normally don't get to play on a daily basis. And you're also talking about how that separated you from the pack, too. Yeah, I mean, I think we obviously see the current state of the NHL, and it's very vanilla, and the guys are all very similar. Uh, it's a great product, but uh, I, it's boring? I, I think that the people are boring. I think the game's not boring. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, the Avery rule. So you literally changed the game. You changed the NHL rule book with uh, Marty Brodeur. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm watching your reaction now. Are you <laughs> proud of that? Do you, would, do you have any regrets? I, I definitely don't have any regrets. I think the interesting thing about that story was that nobody really talks about it, is when I went to bed that night and woke up the next morning, they had changed the rule. Mm. And there's a lot of steps that you actually have to go through. You have to go to a Board of Governors meeting and the union has to agree. Mm -hmm. And that really wasn't the case. And I think that's kind of the interesting tidbit from, from that whole thing. How quickly it happened, yeah. the turnaround there. Yeah. What's your takeaway from that? I mean... Was it because of you? You think it was your personality? I think it definitely had something to do with me, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, you talk in the book about that infamous comment you made about Dion Phaneuf uh, and a lot of regret immediately afterwards. You talked about that. And you, as a result, were sent to rehab, which you didn't want to go to. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, I, I mean, I actually got the report because I was going to put it in the book. And they sent it to me, and it was two pages. And I asked the uh, people at the clinic, is this normal? And they said, well, not really. And, and so I read it, and both pages said I was a narcissist. And I was like, well, I already knew that I was a narcissist before I went there. Right. So. I think it was just this cat and mouse game of the NHL trying to figure out what to do with me. Because really. you were sent there for aggression, right? I was, That's what uh, anger, management. anger management. And it was a hardcore drug and, and alcohol facility. Mm -hmm. So but you got something out of it, you said. Yeah, they, they, they handed me a book on mindfulness when I got there. And I had never heard that word. And I still use it sometimes today when, mm -hmm. when I start to get a little bit anxious or maybe angry. and I. All you do is just listen for your voice, and it's this immediate calming state that it puts you in. So, You don't strike me as somebody that would get tongue-tied all that often, but this interaction with Anna Wintour, yeah. um, <laughs> tell us about what happened. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that was probably one of the most nerve-wracking moments of my life. Meeting um, her. Meeting her, and there's so many people around, and it's just like the movie. There's an assistant whispering, whispering in her ear, like, who's about to walk up to her. And I had Brendan Shanahan with me, who was much better looking and, and much calmer in those situations. And I just panicked, and I called Anna Wintour Mrs. Bloomberg because the mayor Bloomberg was standing beside her, and I called Mr. Bloomberg Mr. Wintour, and that was, <laughs> that was it. It's a great story. Uh, life after hockey. Um, what was the plan going into it, and are you living the plan now? I think the plan was, 
I didn't have a plan. You know, I didn't. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, I knew that I was going to go in a direction that I wanted to. I, I wasn't going to do something that I didn't want to do. And it took a little bit of time until a friend put me on a movie, and and I was on the train ride home from shooting Patriots Day, the Peter Berg movie, and. I just thought to myself, that's the first feeling that's felt similar to playing in Madison Square Garden. All of a sudden, they say action, and 300 people put all their attention on two people in a scene. And it's kind of electric, so. And you fall in love with Shakespeare. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of bad dudes in Shakespeare. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It's, it's fun. And you quote uh, the last page of your book is uh, really interesting. You gotta have to pick up this read because I like how I really do love how you ended the book with some of those quotes oh, and relating oh, it back you. to your life. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate and good it. luck. Thank will, you. Will we see you on the stage soon? Is this what's happening? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be looking for you, Sean. Soon. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right.